for the next year. And again, that's it, and those are just short term. There's so no I'm just going to do changes. a little bit of the logic behind yeah. the employment, just so everybody understands. Our highest selling permits right now are employment permits. They are currently, as of April 29th, I think is our last poll, uh, they've sold more in, from January, February, March, April um, than the entire year of 2014. They continue, you know, 20. I'm going to throw out a number. Let's say they they we sold three. Well, let's say we sold 200 employee permits in 2014. 2014 we sold 200 employee permits. In 2015 we've already exceeded that. Right, we've exceeded what we sold the entire year. So the reason that we are going to continue to issue them, but eventually um, maximize on them and provide people, you know, a waiting list to wait, is because the number of employee permits are exceeding any of the previous years in just the first four months of 2015. Um, that's basically the logic behind the employment. Guest permits are something that were a luxury and that are wonderful um, if if you can allow it, but the, the parking crisis in downtown um, really no longer allows us to give out guest permits to people to park essentially wherever they want for a, a, a somewhat nominal amount of money. Um, so those are the two logics. The Bangs have garage. We're, we're gonna put this in the ordinance. There's um, a, a number of entities that need to be dealt with in order to get these 75 spots plus potentially another 15 more. Um, so it's in the ordinance, but it's you know under the caveat of essentially um, we're still in the process of working on that. Right, and, and the issue with the, the District 4 here is where residents can park, where uh, guests can park, where employees can park, there are limited, limited number of spots. We have more permits out than we actually have spots. Right, so we're trying to do two things. One, limit who can park in those spots and to residents and, um, public. And, and the public, and then open up more spots. So, I mean, when we open up these new spots, you're going to have hopefully enough spots to fit the current permits. We're not going to be doing anything else, just trying to open it up and protect the <laughs> residents um, and the businesses so that the guests coming into town can have spots and our residents get a place and, to park. And just That's to be goal. clear, we're going into the Memorial Day weekend without fee increases, even though clearly that's recommended highly in the Desmond report. And we're doing that um, for 2015. There are, are not currently any fee increases coming down the pipe. And no permits that have been issued or if all, everything's valid that's been issued. So this is a pilot. We're gonna take some of these and see what works, see what doesn't, and then we're going to fine tune all of that for 2016. Question. Sure. Employees. How do we track employees? What about people people who leave employment and go elsewhere? Do we get those system. permits back? No. Just what what a lot what generally happens a lot is that employers buy 20 or 30 permits for their employees. Individual employees buy them as well. The way we track is employers, and we can track the number of employee permits that go out. So that's how we know that that number is at a crisis level um, and that it is, is, is exceeding residential and everything else. So we can track how many people go in. Now whether it's, I'm gonna use an example, this is just an example, whether Stella's going in and buying 15 or 20, and then their employees are then buying, we only see 15, you know, five permits by this person. Do, we can tell it by permits, um, by the number of permits that go out. But if, if say, uh, I, I work at Stella and I'm a waitress and I buy a permit and I leave town, we, d we don't have the ability to track it because you pay it up front. Right, part of the issue is the permitting process, and it needs to be revamped. Right. We need new record keeping, we need, we need new guidelines, guidelines for permitting, and we probably need to make sure that when we give a permit, there's a spot. Right, that's all coming down the road. We can't fix it like that, but okay. next year. And so the, the question is, if everybody's okay with those recommendations, Fred would prepare an ordinance for the first reading on Wednesday, second reading the third week in May, which would go into effect on June 1. Well, technically, um, in order to have it effective on June 1, we would have to um, 
deem it to be an emergency. But under the Faulkner Act, I check this um, in terms of the effective date. Ordinances under the Faulkner Act become effective 20 days after their approval. Um, but there is a process where if two thirds of the council determine that there is an emergency situation, then the ordinance can go into effect immediately. So given the parking crisis, we could uh, put a resolution together and that there's an emergency situation and that the ordinance shall be effective as of June 1st. Just procedurally, I wanted to let you know that that's what we'll have to do in order to have this effective on June 1st with the proposed adoption date of May 22nd. Okay. We're going to do the whole system. So, and again, just so everyone understands, the parking committee meets for probably four hours, at least once or twice a month, to try to go through these recommendations. This is what we're doing, it's two weeks before Memorial Day. So this is what we're doing as a pilot, and what the goal is to revamp much of the system by 2016. So so we will hopefully, you know, in, in Mike and Joe and my ideal world, we'll have residential spaces for people so you're not just buying hunting passes. We'll, you know, have, you know, we're currently creating more parking um, and more spots available to people. And we're going to have a better permit system, both tracking and, um, well, we're just going to revamp the whole permit system, which seems to be um, struggling. So the, the parking committee is in no way, shape, or form done. We are doing, you know, goals for 2016. We want to be able to properly prepare people for p potential rate increases, which I think is safe to say for 2016. Um, residential permit spots for people and, and kind of eliminating the permit pass. And as Joe said, when you go in and get a permit, um, there shouldn't be five people to one spot that's creating the problem in the downtown. And so all of this is on our on our map, on our, you know, it's on our agenda. These are pilots for getting us through the summer. There is going to be some much more drastic changes for 2016. But let me reiterate, there's no fee increase. For 2015. For 2015. <laughs> Next. Anything else? I can do 10 seconds on the street performer. <laughs> um, so here's what we're doing with street performers. Um, as many of you know, we um, talked about kind of sharing the wealth of the street performers on the boardwalk and having them kind of go around so you didn't have the exact same thing in the exact same spot all day and competing against a business who is potentially paying a musician or band to play. So in the spirit of that, we have amended the street performer permit to require that if after three hours, if you are asked by a special or officer to move, you move 100 feet. Um, we are not adjusting the hours. We were initially going to adjust the hours and have the street performer stop at a certain time. Um, we have decided not to do that. Many of the street performers like performing later in the night. Um, and our concern has been with business owners, and we would like to see um, them have the opportunity to have outside music without it conflicting with the street performer, who we would just ask to move 100 feet after three hours. If you aren't asked to move, you don't have to move. And that's, and the fee increase is still under discussion. Is that why it's not in the ordinance? Yes. And say again. Well, the, the ordinance that is in your packets for consideration on a Wednesday you pay for first reading. Oh, 100. Oh, no, 100. Uh, has no fee increase. Right now, the fee that's in the code is an annual fee of $20. The original discussion was to increase that to $50. Uh, my understanding was that after some consideration, uh, we were not going to bump up the fee at all, leave it at $20. However, that's subject to further consideration by you now. I say bump it up to $50. I, I mean, we're the only city in America where you can park for a year for $30. You can perform on the boardwalk for a year for $20. It's not worth, you might, make it free. Make it free. It's not worth the paperwork, Cindy, Melody, you have to go through 
I mean, to fill out all the regulations, we probably lose money in twenty dollars. And the only thing I would illustrate is if you were at the last two meetings ago, um, a street performer was here and advised that he makes a minimum of two or three hundred dollars a night. Um, so increasing the fee from twenty dollars annually to fifty dollars annually to people who are making two or three hundred dollars a night, I would I would argue is not a hardship. So if there's a council consensus for that, we'll put the fee increase back in and the ordinance as revised will be uh, ready for your introduction on Wednesday. Does anybody have a problem with the $50? No. We can put the $50 in. Because that may go over the fee also. The hours, uh, just as a point of reference, the ordinance right now uh, says that street performers may conduct performances between the hours of 9 a.m. and 10 p.m. Originally, there was some thought to restrict that to between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Yeah, I want to skip the 7. I'm fine with 11, although if anybody feels passionate about that one way or the other. The 7 o'clock, I would move for a number of reasons. There's a number of, there's a drum circle. There's, there's a number of people who perform after 7 o'clock who, who feel this would be a real hardship to them, which I have no problem with. Um, so we can keep it at... 10? 10. 10. And if you want to start it a little later at 11 instead of 9. I'm not passionate about the hours. I'm passionate about businesses um, and residents and people who pay for season passes enjoying their experience on the beach and not having to listen to the same music for eight hours all day. That is what I'm passionate about. The other stuff, I'm certainly open for debate. I don't care. So keep the hours. Anything else? For now, we'll leave the hours Okay, your last item, all right, on under discussions. All right, uh, again, this year we're being asked by Neptune Township to split the cost for the annual treatment, all right, of Wesley Lake. All right, the cost is 8200 All right, the city's cost would be 4100 All right, they're primarily concerned with the treatment of the western portion of the lake, all right, as it was treated last year. All right, uh, there were some questions about this and how often it has to be done. I'm hearing that uh, in order to all right, make sure that the, the water level, or I should say the, um, the elevated levels of the, night, the nutrients, all right, it has to be treated on an annual basis. I feel like they sat and told us that was not the case last time. Uh, I think it's total bullshit. Just because, I mean, I, I grew up we all grew up. Rita, everybody, Louise. I mean, I remember when everyone went to J.J. Newberry's and bought goldfish and the lake was full of fish. I mean, last year was an anomaly that, you know, there was like a weed infestation. The first one I remember, you've been here, you were a cop. It was the first one ever. Duh, do you think it, do you think it had to do with Neptune was rebuilding the retaining wall and dredged the lake and the water level was at an all time low the entire winter, spring into summer? I think it had to do with that. And last year they never once said every year. And I, I can't even understand the two bids. That's a different point. But it's always Princeton Hydro, Princeton Hydro, Dr. Sue's are the same guy from Deal Lake Commission. Seem to have a monopoly on like just making money through a Bakken and Neptune. Where I, I mean I like you know, I'm voting no and plus last year when Dr. Brantley came in I think July and they like, pulled this stunt on us, like we said, How about the gates, guy? What are you doing with the gates? And oh we'll look into that. They, well the gates are still locked at night, which is a different subject, but again why spend money on this every year if it's not needed? If it's needed down the road, I would be the first one to say, let's Andy up. But then again, maybe I won't be because with all our infrastructure, <coughs> we're putting in storm scepters, we're putting in everything, and all the runoff, the majority of the runoff is from the lake, and I don't care what everybody says, is from Neptune and Ocean Grove. You go up to Route 35 and you mm -hmm. see all the new gas stations they're building where they're taking all the land and just Black top, black top, black That's top. That's just a fact. And so the 61% or 60% of the watershed is Neptune. Right. Okay. So, and then you look at like, they're, they have no storm scepters, they have nothing except these giant outfall pipes that are this big with lousy little screens around catch, catching all the garbage and the styrofoam. So 
they should be more concerned about addressing like what they're doing not to clean the lake than buying in us every year for forty one hundred dollars for something that may or may not happen. But again, I think it's eight thousand, not forty one. Forty one hundred dollars. But I mean, and, and again, somebody. I mean, I was hoping. Uh, Jim Henry would be here tonight because I know he attends. But I mean, somebody—I mean, somebody at the three-minute session. Somebody tell me, like, whenever you remember that lake having weeds in it, and if we're doing that lake, why aren't we doing Sunset Lake, a lake in our own city? I mean, so hey, guys, spend on ours, but let your lake have weeds. And you know, it's—it's it's just to me, it's just like, mm, and guess what, guys, Neptune, you're a lot better money state than we are so and both the proposals are very clear is that it comes from primarily from the runoff from the watershed uh, and the uh like joe said approximately 60 percent of the watershed is empty oh there's no yeah there's no question about it and we have again with the redevelopment now look we're doing a lot of blacktop and everything with the beachfront with the infrastructure and everything but we are putting in the scepters we are putting in like you know whatever they're called to, to contain the basins and the rain, rain gardens essentially and the right. right and we are doing that but what are they doing to stop this nothing so I don't know and again if I'm wrong I'm wrong but I'm 64 years old I mean I, I, I I've I seen weeds I've seen weeds one year <laughs> and last year when again the entire lake was dredged so they could rebuild their retaining walls yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm on the Wesley Lake Commission, and the discussion that I remember, and I was there and then left, but I believe the discussion concluded before I left. The discussion was one, very simple, one, they feel like the weeds are come, gonna come back, and two, they took the lower bid, which just happened to be Princeton Hydra, of course. Um, so that's that was their rationale there. So take it or leave it. Um, I guess, I mean, if the weeds come back, we can we can have a treatment plan. There, I don't I don't love the idea of just putting the pesticide in there to kill the weeds. There is an increase in the last whatever years that increased nutrient runoff without a doubt. Um, so that's where it would be coming from if it does come from this year, from back this year. But um, I'm not going to rush to dump pesticides in the lake that empties into the ocean where we swim and we eat the fish from. So. Um, are we going to kill everything in the lake? I don't know. I mean, we can we can address it as it comes. I have no issue with that. I also wish Neptune would be more concerned. I'm very much concerned with like the flooding we had six months ago or whatever. Be more concerned with the outflow pipe and the predicament there. And where we're willing to split that cost with them tomorrow, but it's not on the top of their agenda. Where because their wall is so high. In Ocean Grove, they don't get flooded, but we get flooded. But that outfall pipe is in dire need of repair, which to me is much more important than like killing weeds that may not grow. So, if you can get an answer from them when they're going to address the outfall pipe, I'd appreciate it. All right, which I've, I've been to two meetings and I raised the flood hazard and coming up with a more comprehensive plan twice. And say, it's something we're, we're trying to work on, but it's slow. And that was something when I sent Cindy Renduzzo home, I should have said, wait a second, <laughs> you owe us one. What are you doing with, well, ask her Wednesday night. What are you doing to help us with that outfall pipe? The cap is getting we still wider. About so. what? The like cap is getting wider. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Which is a potential? I mean, it's filling up with sand, you know, rapidly. So is Dio Lake Flume, and they didn't, uh, they, 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 they waited 500 feet before beach replenishment. At least we're not bombs on the beach. And anybody who's been to the Lock Harbor Beach, you need a golf cart to get from like the parking lot to the ocean now. I mean, it, it's a hike. And all that sand is going right into our flume on Deal Lake. So, I mean, we have another problem there, which I'm hoping the Army Corps of Engineers is looking at. Uh, that has nothing to do with Neptune, but you know, both of them, we cannot afford to have them back up. And if the hole in the flume on Wesley Lake is getting bigger, to me, that's more important. So tell Doc Brantley, let's address that. And the heck with the weeds. The only thing I would say to John's point is if, if we're working with Neptune in the spirit of cooperation, and every year we bring up the gates, the gates, the gates that they lock, that's not the spirit of cooperation when you're coming to us that you want us to pay half a bill. 
right? The spirit of cooperation is working together on all these things, not blowing off the thing that we keep saying is important to us, which is locking the gates, the gates, the gates. Although I read a funny email today. Well, I'd be happy to raise it. And a year ago, when he was here, he did say he would look into it. I know he did. Because we didn't expect him to come, because we told him, no, don't come, it's dead. But he came and he made his plea and he got three votes. All right, matters will be brought up by the City Council. I have a quick one. I have two. I have oh, one. Go, go Joe. start at you, Joe. Start down here. All right. Um, I was just got a question about now that the weather has warmed, will we be doing the cross crosswalks on third and fourth because it's still a concern with the kids walking in? Mm -hmm. And when we do the crosswalks, is it possible to do a style that's more visible to the driver, like the, instead of just like the two lines going like this, like the blocks? Are oh, you talking about the painting? Yeah, I just I'm just wondering if that's more of a visible when you're driving when you see like the slanted. Big blocks. Yeah, speaking for summer school, right? Right, summer as opposed school. to just the lines going across. You can miss, and they wear off a lot easier as well. So if we could just investigate a better style on that. And then this is for the, the council, and I need to update everyone on this. Um, the comprehensive economic development strategies, I guess it's a program, there is um, a process by which municipalities can enter a funding mechanism for a project. So there's been people coming from from this program and from some other nonprofits and doing brainstorming and talking about local work in Asbury Park. What's happened to this point is purely just us getting this through the door and then down the road if we want to apply for grants, they're on a three month rolling basis. Didn't cost us anything to get in the door. Uh, it The four projects that they kind of brainstormed with community members are um, Second Life Bikes program to focus on young women, Asbury Park Green Infrastructure following up the rebuild by design, making the Asbury Park Transportation Center more of a community center connecting the downtown to Springwood to Main Street, and the one that I'm the most excited about, which would be, and Yvonne's been in at least one of the meetings, it, when we've been working on the workforce development stuff, they're talking about enhancing and developing different workforce development programs in Asbury Park. So what's going to happen is I think if it hasn't happened yet, it will happen soon. We'll get approved to be within this mechanism and then we can decide to move forward or, or not move forward at any point in these three month um, phasing funding cycles. And it's the, the, the thing that's great about it, the thing that I think I've put time into it for is because there's quite a bit of money at the end of the rainbow. Um, if you get there or not, it's a question, but there is funding there, so that's all I have. Just one item. Um, following up on workforce development, we've been getting a lot of jobs that are available, and we need a mechanism for getting this information out to the community. I don't know what that mechanism is because of the volume of, of things that are coming through. The only thing I'll say is we made sure that we got all the waterfront jobs up on the website. We Facebook, and, and listen, I, I agree with you. I think there needs to be better ways to get this stuff out. Um, we got them up on the, we got them up in Tom's email blast. The website, Facebook, and I think I Twittered them out. I mean, the only other thing I would say is if you don't already have them up, but I, I thought I saw them on the Main Street board too. Yeah, I mean, those are just some of the steps, but if you have other places you want us to get the word out, by all means, that's just what, where we did. Well, I'm, I'm looking for suggestions because these are not waterfront jobs. These are jobs throughout Monmouth County oh, okay. that are for adults and people who need employment. And how do I get this information right. out and say these jobs are available and this is what you need to do to get them? For Monmouth County, not Asbury Park. From yeah, it's for the greater area. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's coming from the is workforce this the FBIG stuff too that you that we were talking uh, no, about? No, this APCB? is coming from workforce development out of investment board out of Eatontown. Okay, we both signed up for their email. And we get hey, like I'm, five emails. Yeah, no, I'm jobs. open for suggestions. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm open for suggestions. I got no problem putting on that board. 
I mean, the electronic board. I mean, it was, well, it's, 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 there's a lot there's and a lot. specific. Oh, okay. I think that was APTV's concern as well because we talked about that in there. And for us to do slideshows, and Hera, you correct me if I'm wrong, but for, for us to put it on our website, that's a piece of cake. For us to do slides to get up on um, channel 77 and, and whatever the, the right. BIOS and the Verizon channel, those are things that take us you know a period of time in between doing the editing of all all of this and it's obviously run by volunteers so it's hard for us to do things that have quick turnaround for aptv that that you would be changing once or twice a week that would be hard for us to do could we do like a just a uh, like job opportunities web page and then when there's specific ones that might be like good target jobs in asbury park very close or good matches put them at like the breaking news piece on the website? Uh, well, we currently have now a hiring page. We have on the website that says now hiring where we list the jobs that we're hiring in Asbury. So are you okay. saying sh you want to extend that to Monmouth County, which I, I, I would think about, but I'm not against. I just never thought about it. Yeah, or, yeah. or a, a, yeah, maybe extend it's it to Monmouth. It's an opportunity for Asbury Park residents to find employment. And just okay, and then somebody would need to keep track on what jobs were Right, so filled. that would be, it's, it's, and it's, I would say, need to happen like two or three times a week, somebody would need to take those emails and just cut and paste the links I mean, up there. I mean, it's a job for somebody, so we yeah. have to think about it. Do, do they what have we their do? own website? Can we just say, good job openings, go to this website? Yeah, we should check. For more, and then we can keep it static, right? right. I can just put that right, in there. Right, right, right. Okay. All right, I'll check. Okay, and yeah, and I'm know. open to any suggestions on getting word, word, the word out on stuff. By all means, it's a but passion of mine. So, absolutely. I'm just telling you the hiccup with APTV and the slides. No, I understand, yeah. and it's the volume, but it's kind of like we need to figure out a way to get this information out. And I don't have the answer. So we have an email list of churches, right? I know Jackie sent me, I think Jackie sent me an email list of church contacts, or I forget, somebody sent me an email list of church contacts. I did Sue Chapman. Um, I mean, I, I, I would use that as a mechanism on getting the word out and say, you know, you should regularly check this. Okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> That's it for me. Thank you. Jesse. Okay. trying to figure out which one I want to talk about first. Is it possible that, let me just put it this way, years ago, Asbury Park had a tool library where residents could come over and pick out a shovel or a lawnmower, and I don't know how many years it's been, but we, it was a tool library and got it to public works. And is there any way that um, this come, can come back? Because, um, a lot of people I know, we do a friend of mine, we do volunteer work and we stop over various people's houses to cut their grass and senior citizens and they don't have a lawnmower so I have to go all the way back and they ask me, well, can we borrow a lawnmower? But if we had a tool library, a lot, it would help tremendously. Um, two weeks ago I participated in the aid walk and Tony, I would suggest that you, and Tony over there, <laughs> that you tell whoever applied for these uh, different events to get a police, <laughs> get a police escort, because instead of walking, Joe was there also, instead of walking, I was mostly a traffic cop. Well, that's all right, I worked it out. Uh, one of the things that's been on my mind is the West Side, and I call, because most of the calls I get and people are lingering on my porch is from the west side. I asked Tony this morning, Mr. Nuccio, will he please have a department head, and I know John is tired of it too, and his wife and a few others, is tired of employees spreading the word that they can just come anytime they want at your house because we're council people and that's, that's not gonna happen anymore. So to ask Tony this morning, would he please call, uh, have talk to the department head people and have them tell the employees to stop doing this. And um, that's basically it. 
Amy? I have uh, one thing. We're doing credit card transactions on the beach now, so you don't have to just have cash. That's it. And a quick follow up to that, I, I asked about the credit cards because, and the, I said, can I pay my tax bill with credit cards? And the response was no, but hopefully within the next month. So they're going to be in city halls also soon. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, I have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, two quick things. Number one, I um, heard us talk earlier, uh, Tom Gilmore brought up earlier about the, uh, uh, the parking lot. All right, again, all right, as I've been saying since for the last couple of council meetings, I'm just going to ask people, please be patient with us. All right, it'll be well worth it. All right, the second item that I have is on Saturday, <clears throat> excuse me, on Saturday, May 23rd, from 12 noon, all right, starting at 12 noon, all right, right here in the council chambers, all right, the city is going to have a presentation, all right, to explain our regional contribution program, our RCA program. All right, it's a program that's really worthwhile. All right, so you can get information on um, all right, how you could get money from the city all right, to all right, do some rehab on houses. All right, so again, that's going to be May 23rd from 12 noon, right here in the council chambers. Get what, flyers. What right, day is over, that, Tony? I'm sorry? Saturday. 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 Okay. All right, there's flyers right here on the table if you help yourself. Huh. I think it's getting out. I have nothing more. Fred? I have no matters at this time. Okay. Right now it's public participation. May I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warren? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Okay, at this time, uh, the public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order and, after appropriate warning, may terminate any further comments from the speaker. I ask any public people, please state your name and spell your name for the record, and you have a three-minute time limit. Please step up to the mic. Hi, Joe Pepe, Deal Lake Drive, PEPE. -E. I just have two very brief things. The 25% of the space being used for an arcade, just to put it in perspective, this room is about 2,100 square feet. 540 square feet would be usable for arcade games. If an arcade game is about two foot by three feet, in this room, picture where you guys are sitting, I call that my restaurant, luncheonette, whatever. I can put 90 games in this room. That's how much 25% of this room being arcade games. Picture this room, that being a snack bar, this room being 90% arcade games. I'd be within the rule that you guys want to put. Most towns make a limit of two to three you know, uh, coin-operated games, and that eliminates the whole problem of trying to figure out square footage and area and things like that. And the only other thing I have is on the, um, on the boardwalk with the performers, most towns, they limit things to no amplifiers, no drums. We live down here. We kind of have the right to peacefully be on the boardwalk and en enjoy, you know, a summerscape, a seaside scape, without really being assaulted by noise that we didn't ask to hear, we didn't pay to hear it, and it's intrusive. Somebody playing an acoustic guitar, you can tune them out. It, it lasts for a few seconds while you're walking. But some of the people on the boardwalk, I mean, I can hear them from four blocks away. And there's no way I would sit in a restaurant outside and have to, I mean, when I go to Point Pleasant and I want to sit outside and eat or something, I'm not assaulted by somebody practicing uh, their drums. That's so, it. Joe, just so you know, we have an anti ampli You cannot have an amplifier on the boardwalk currently, because right. we checked that. That was yep. one of Joe's concerns. Um, so that currently exists. Just, uh, just an FYI to you on that. No, I knew that, but it's it's the drums, you know. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't. I, I'm not here. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Mina Miranda, Wake Avenue. Uh, is that fifty dollars a week or fifty dollars for the whole season? It's well, it was current. It's annual, Rita, and it was twenty dollars. 
Well, that should be by the week. It, sh it should be like $50 a week or $100. Well, I don't disagree with you. So as the person who did a little bit of research on this, I wanted to go to 150 so yeah. I checked. Atlantic City, Seaside, Point Pleasant, and nobody goes above fifty to seventy-five dollars. Uh, I'm only saying I don't want to be the town that 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 charges you quadruple what any other town in the state of New Jersey. I researched this because I thought it seemed extremely low. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was those escrow accounts that uh, Mr. Nuccio talked about. The uh, for the planning board and the zoning board. Where does it, wait, who holds on to that money? I mean, years ago, the tax collector held on to all the money every day collected. And now I find out that different departments hold different money. Don't you think that one person, the tax collector, every day at a certain time should have money? And that's the way it used to be. What is, and some mercantile licenses are, are held by other people in this building? It's ridiculous. One person should handle all the money. Oh, and that should be the tax collector. And I think it's an ordinance if you look it up. I don't know if it's 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock that all money should be, that comes into the building in one day should be handled by one person, the tax collector. And the other thing I, I wanted to know is, on those escrow accounts, who holds on to that money? Does the tax collector get that money, or is that just held somewhere else? And then, well, is that the... Do you want to answer first, or do you want to use up your... Huh? Do you want me to answer, or do you want to use your time first? No, I'll finish first. And then, uh, the other thing I wanted to say about the escrow accounts. Aren't they supposed to pay the people that are working that night, like on the planning board, the zone, um, Barbara, and all these other people that work for the planning board? Don't they get paid from that, that money that comes in? I think there's an ordinance with Barbara, but I'm not sure that she was supposed to get a certain amount of money, but now she has comp time too. So which is it? Does she get money from the ordinance or does she get money from comp time? You gotta, you gotta get that into control. I, you spent 20 minutes on a pinball machine tonight for, for a business. You have to get uh, all this money under control. First of all, you put an article in the paper that says our taxes are going up $160 for a house that's 200000 I'd like to know how many houses are 200000 in Asbury. I tried to find out today, but I couldn't because the tax assessor wasn't in. That's a lot of money. I mean, you should be working on things. To up the mic. You want me to answer your questions now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. First thing, all right, any money that goes to any departments, all right, within 24 hours, all right, the state reg says it has to be turned over, all right, into all right, the general treasury. So it's turned over to the finance all right, department. All right, other than that, I don't know of any other department that's holding their own money. All right, the second issue is that uh, with this ordinance, this ordinance is going to be designed where all of our uh, developers uh, are going to maintain an escrow account. Those escrow accounts will be maintained by uh, the finance department. Monies for each developer will go into an individual account by uh, costs that are incurred by the city uh, as a result of any development will be paid for by, by the developer through the escrow account. By, that would include by, the professionals for the zoning board and the, by, the, uh, and the planning board. Well, isn't that what's happening now? You mean they're getting away with not paying when they change their, uh, like, put in the parking lot where a building should be? Is that what's going on now? They don't pay? If I could just clarify, the ordinance that currently coming to the council deals specifically with requests for amendments to existing redevelopment plans. So that's separate from, you know, a, a, just a development application where escrow is routinely posted. Um, in the past, the city had no procedure where a developer came to the city and requested an amendment to the CPD or the waterfront plan or any of the other redevelopment plans. There's a process the city then has to undergo with the board preparation of an ordinance for all the planning board, and this way we're requiring, similar to the other um, matter, that the developer post escrow and it, it, it's on the developer's dime rather than the city's. 
Right. There already is a process in place with regard to just regular development uh, matters coming before the planning zone. But right now, that money then goes to the tax collector? You said it goes to the finance office. Who in the finance office? It goes to <laughs> all right, James Foster all right, who makes that deposit. All right. The tax collector, all right, money's going to the tax collector, the tax collector, all right, will make deposits, all right, all of that, the receipts, all right, go to James Foster. Well, so I think that's for donations, all right, will go straight to James Foster so it can be posted. Well, Foster is what? what what's his title? All right, he's an accountant. Yeah, well, I think if you look it up, you'll see there's an ordinance that the tax collector should handle all the money. And by a certain time, I don't know if it's three or four, but I remember that ordinance. And the escrow accounts are maintained by the finance department. Yeah. Well, you better get money under control because people aren't going to put up with it. But Rita, just uh, we, we agree with you about the escrow accounts. And this council like discovered it, I'm going to say, a couple months ago. We talked to Fred about it. Fred got on the ball, uh, responded very quickly, and we have a resolution ordinance whatever so from here on out there's no more free rides from developers you, you want it you want an amendment change you have to pay the bills that's the escrow account so and when we met with mr cunningham the state uh what about that state to visit the yeah, dlgs he, he was amazed we, we didn't have this online already and commended us for like adopting this. So uh, a couple things we are finding out and they did slip through the cracks and we are correcting them and that's one of them. As far as the article in the paper, as far as the tax increase, I, I didn't think it was a great article just because uh, it, was, it was explained in a, a crazy way. Uh, the, your, your taxes are not on your valuation of your home, your taxes are about the amount of money to be raised through a tax, you know, raising money. That's how taxes are decided. Not about the valuation. That will affect it. Everybody's differently down the road, but I, I didn't like the article myself. Uh, and I thought it was very confusing. And I agree with you. How many houses are less than 220? It's a crazy article. And that's, that leaves out commercial. So, again, we don't know our tax rate yet for many reasons. One, we don't know what the county rate is. We don't know what our transitional aid is. And there's still a lot of tax appeals out there that haven't been settled yet. So once those tax appeals are settled, and if we lose rateables, the taxes will go up also. And anything over a million dollars is still out there being you know, fought in courts or debated in courts with a, an agreement. So the, we'll address the taxes down the road. But I, I thought it was like, like it, you, you could explain the taxes like 15 different ways. 15 different math people could explain it 15 different ways and confuse you all 15 different ways. When it's time to come, we'll give you the bottom line. Thank you. Danny? Good evening. Dan Harris, 17 Ridge Avenue, Asbury Park. Um, I want to address one thing. In reference to a lot of the um, multiple family buildings that have garbage bins with containers in there, is there any ordinance where they have to be enclosed in the front because a lot of times in a lot of these places where they have multiple units and they have <clears throat> large containers for garbage they're only covered on three sides so two things happen one the garbage blows out into the street and second it's like horrible to look at so to me it's a quality of life issue so i'd appreciate it if it was something the city could do through code enforcement where units who have you know, who have these containers that are picked up by the lease and waste management, et cetera, et cetera, are enclosed all the way around. Okay, and I know it's a hassle of closing the gate, but it's also a bigger hassle when you look in there and you see garbage blowing all over the neighborhood, and this happens a lot on the west side. So, you know, I just asked the city would they look into that. Um, second thing, in reference to Mr. Pepe's um, 
comment about the drums. One thing Asbury prides itself in is its diversification. And diversification does not just take place with lifestyles, but diversification also takes place with music. I agree that there should be something done in reference to amplification, but to say that you cannot play a drum would probably just make a certain group of people not be able to express, and musicians, express their prowess or their enjoyment of their craft. So I think the amplification thing is good, but to say, well, you can't play drums, I don't want to listen to drums, well, I might not want to listen to an acoustic guitar either. I mean, we all have our preferences in reference to music. So please take that into consideration and to keep the diversification in the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tony, can you look into that, if, if there is anything with Rob? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, and Danny, the street performer is going to be across the board. Nobody stopped. Drummers or guitar players were just after three hours, if asked, that you move 100 feet. Well, no, I get it. I get it. Thank you. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scarano, Long Branch. Um, I just wanted to bring up some ideas. Um, because the summer, there's always people walking around on the street, which is good. But we have a lot of vans and, and trucks, commercial vehicles that are parked on the streets. And I don't think they should be there. Box trucks. You can get mugged behind a big van or a truck under a big tree. So we need to do something about that. The police should ticket them or have them towed or whatever it takes, but they shouldn't be on the streets, especially at night. Then, since electric cars are becoming more popular, we should have it clearly marked where you can pay to park your car to get charged at a parking meter, and maybe we'll be the first city in the state to do that. I'm not sure if we would be, but that'd be a nice thing to have because I think we had the first electric street cars or something like that, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Then I'd like to get a report on the house numbers, how we're doing with that. Are we winning or the drug dealers winning by knocking the numbers off the houses? And then um, the bike riders, do we enforce the rules with wearing helmets? Other towns, you go to Ocean Township, I would say, Everywhere you see, you see kids and parents with helmets on. Um, I don't know why Asbury Park doesn't do that. The other thing for getting the word out about jobs, every storefront should have a sign that tells job hunters that they should go to the city website. Just a little sign, like no bare feet, no shirt, no service. You can have that little sign that tells you where to go on every store on street level. And any business that gets a tax break, you know, if they're in a building that's in a pilot program, I think they should be able to, the city should be able to find out whether the employees work in the city, I live in the city or not, and there should be a quota system. And then um, when we're talking about noise, there's a lot of cars in the summertime with the windows down, and you can hear them a half a block away. I don't know why they just don't get pulled over automatically, but I think that's a, a nuisance in itself, a quality of life issue. Thank you very much. So can I have any information about the house numbers and your work on my other suggestions? I will check with uh, Rob and Kewen to see how they're doing on that. Not overnight. Pardon me? I'll check with Rob McEwen about the house numbers. <coughs> okay. I, I know they started they, they started to enforce it. And yeah, I was told. I, people say thank you, Jerry, when they get their ticket. <laughs> well, I, I think it's a great idea they should all be numbered. So they started it where they stand. I'm not sure, Jerry. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Carvalho, C-A-R-V as in Victor, A-L-H-O, and I live on Kingsley Street in Asbury Park. Um, I actually was gonna talk about bike safety too, but from a different perspective. Um, I notice walking and biking around Asbury that it seems like a lot of people don't necessarily understand the bike rules and that they're supposed to be on the streets, going with traffic, stopping at traffic lights, and I thought it might be, um, 
great for the town to do some informational messages about proper bike safety. I don't, I never encourage the police ticketing people, but maybe if they could stop people and issue warnings and just let people know, hey, this is how you're supposed to ride your bike, I think that would be good to start enforcing as we get more people in the city in the summer and to um, keep our bikers safe. And that's in part because I think biking is, um, would be great for us to promote, to help with all of our parking problems. Um, and I was really excited to hear Joe talk about the funding source for potentially making um, the trans the transportation area of the city uh, more of a hub because um, I think that would be a fabulous thing to do if people felt safe taking the train not just to Asbury before they're going to come to dinner but also feeling safe to take that to wait on the platform and taking the train home at night I think there are a lot of people who come from neighboring shore towns and if they felt comfortable on the train that would be an, you know a great way for them to get here be able to enjoy the nightlife safely get back home and also cut down on our parking. So it would be something I would ask you to consider. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I never heard the motion. I heard second. <laughs> I said motion.